fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hi-Yo Silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Faster, boy, faster. The long, winding wagon trail was deeply rutted by the passing of countless wheels. Through the narrow ravine, thousands of covered wagons had rolled toward the green, fertile farmlands of the west, newly opened to settlers by liberal homestead laws. Now, still another wagon train was marching westward, bringing more families from the East whose imagination and hopes had been fired by the tales of land and opportunity awaiting those who pioneered across the prairie. It came to a swift-moving stream, and Seth Holloway, leader of the train, held up his hand. Then, cautiously testing the rushing current, he signaled the wagons on. The air was alive with the shouts of men and the crack of whips as the horse-drawn, canvas-covered vehicles lumbered heavily into the stream. Get up! Get up there! For my treacherous, watch out and don't sweep you down the street. We'll be careful, Seth. Come on, boys. Get up. Get along there. Get along there. Get up your four legged galoots. Now, Ezra, leave them horses be. Land's sake, the poor beasts are doing the best they can. That water most up to their neck. Uh, don't be telling me what to do, sir. They have the wagon team is a man's job. What do you send there? It's Tom and Lucy. They're in trouble. Seth. Seth, let's go. Tom, Tom, look out. One of the trace maps is the team is broken. Pull up there. Oh, Tom, there goes another. The horses. The current's carrying them away from the wagon. I can't hold them, Lucy. Look. All four of my trace lines have snapped. The team will break loose. Tom, watch out. The horses will pull you into the water. Tom. Lucy, Lucy, jump. The wagon will carry you down the stream. I, I can't swim. Why, where's my horse, Lucy? Quick. He can't carry his boat, Seth. I'll swim alongside and hold onto the saddle. Now hurry. I, I'll try. That's it. Are you all right, Lucy? She's doing fine, Tom. You just keep hanging on them reins and let them horses pull you ashore. Tom, our, our wagon is floating away. Can't be helped, honey. Oh, oh. Thanks. Oh, it sure feels good to have ground under my feet again. Let me help you, Lucy. Oh, Sarah. Oh, you poor child. You're still shivering from your shock. 
here now. Put this shawl around your shoulders. Oh, Sarah, we've lost the wagon. And all the nice new things I bought to make a home for Tom out here in the West. There, there, now don't take on so. Everything will turn out all right. Seth, look. Well, what is it, Tom? Those four trace straps that joined my team with the wagon. They didn't just break. They were cut more than two-thirds through with a knife. <laughs> That night, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan Reed rode along a ridge overlooking the campfires of the wagon train in the ravine. The wagons had been drawn into a protective circle where a strip of wood split the ravine in the center, forming two narrow prongs of open country. In one of these, the settlers had made camp. In the flickering firelight, the three riders could see them moving about. Another group of homesteaders from the east, Tonto. Ah. From the east? Golly, they've come a long way. Yes, Dan. They've risked a lot to make this trip, gamble their whole future. They're the kind of people the West needs, people who will make homes here, people with the courage to face danger and fight for their rights. Ah, uh, they make plenty good farmers. Yes, Tonto, land is plentiful in these parts, more than enough for everyone. The people who will make it rich are pioneers like those. Say, what's that? Now listen. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 oh Scott, oh, fella. That buffalo... Yes, it's just possible to make them out in the moonlight. Golly, they're coming like the wind. Something frightened them. They're stampeding. Ah. Hello, did you hear? Ah. Men stampede buffalo with guns. But why should anyone want to do that? I don't know, Dan, but that wagon train is camped directly in the path of the stampede. That's right. In that narrow ravine, the settlers are liable to be crushed to death. What do we do? There's one chance. Come on, Silver. Come on, Let's go, Victor. Come on, Silver. Hoy! Meanwhile, unaware of the danger that threatened them, the homesteaders clustered about their campfires and listened to Ezra Turner voice his dissatisfaction with the western trip. Hey, I'm telling you it was a mistake to come out here in the first place. We should have stayed back east where we belonged. You knew this trip wasn't going to be any better roses, Ezra. Yeah, maybe so, Seth. Today, I didn't think it'd be a garden of thorns. If you ask me, Ezra Turner, you're the only thorn around here, and you're sticking in everybody, including your wife. Yeah, uh, hold your tongue, sir. Women folks should be seen and not heard. Why, you tongue-wagging old galoot? We've had nothing but trouble since we started West. Trouble with a capital T. We've been cheated, robbed, and doggone if I don't think now somebody's trying to murder us. Hey, what in tarnation's that? Uh, I declare, sounds almost like thunder. Can't be thunder with a full moon showing. It, it's coming closer. Hey, what in blazes? Sharp winds, you hush if it ever's right. Huh? Death is stalking our trail. That's buffalo coming. Buffalo? Are you sure? The old fool's telling the truth for once, Lucy. I can see him myself. Get to the wagons. They're heading this way. They'll trap us. Hurry, Lucy. Hitch up the horses. Drive the wagons out of here. There isn't time, Seth. They're almost on us. Everybody climb inside the wagons. Protect yourselves as best you yeah, can. Buffalo will rip through those old crates like paper. There must be three or four hundred in that herd. It's our only choice. If they smash the wagons, none of us will come through alive. Here they come. Closer, Silver. Streaking across the ravine on the powerful white stallion, the Lone Ranger maneuvered between the wagon train and the onrushing buffalo and fired several shots in the air. Master, big fella. Racing close behind the masked rider, Tonto swerved Scott between the stampeding beasts and the helpless settlers and followed suit. Get him up, Scout! For a moment, the buffalo seemed to hesitate in their mad flight. Then, although a few of the bison plunged straight toward the camp, the herd itself swerved into the open country, which lay on the opposite side of the wooded strip. Come on, Tonto. A few of the buffalo got through. Ah! Them took plenty of damage to camp. Come on, Silver! Everybody, danger's over. Anybody hurt? How about you women folk? Land sakes, Seth. Don't worry about us. We're fine. Say, who were those men, Seth? The two that turned the buffalo away. I don't know, Tom, but they sure saved our bacon. If it hadn't been for them, the whole herd would have run through here instead of just a few. Uh, bless them few. Look what they did to my wagon. Yep, sure looks like a mess of splinters, Ezra. 
Lucky you and Sarah were in Tom's wagon when them bison came through. There ain't even enough left for kindling. With stuff strung out every which way. By thunder, I've had all the waste I can stand. Two horsemen coming. Mask and an engine. Cutlows. More trouble, eh? Well, I'll show them I can give trouble as well as take it. Oh, wait. Mask man's on a white horse. It was a rider on a white horse who turned the buffalo. Don't try any tricks, mister, or you'll get a bullet from this gun. I'm not what you think. My friend and I came to see if the buffalo had hurt any of you. Oh. Then you two were the men who drove the buffalo off. That's right. I ain't much of a hand for speech, you stranger. But I'm telling you, there ain't a man, woman, or child in this outfit that ain't thankful for what you and your partner did. Right. did the buffalo yes, do sir, much man. damage? Well, some of the wagons are pretty smashed up. But I hanker we might get them rolling again. Yeah, that's plum foolishness, Seth, and you know it. We haven't got a ghost of a chance of getting them wagons to run. I said it before, and I say it again. Let's turn them horses round and head back where we come from. Yeah. And I ain't alone in my argument either. You aren't a quitter, are you? Of course you ain't a quitter. Don't you go insinuating I am. Well, you embarked on this trip knowing the risks and the responsibility. What would you call a man who backed out on his bargain? I'd call anybody who backed out on this trip plain smart. We've had nothing but trouble since we crossed the Mississippi. And I'm heading east and I'm inviting everybody here to join me. Oh, wait. I'm with you. What about the rest of you men? I'm following my nose, stranger. And it's pointed west. What about you, Tom? I don't know, Seth. Maybe Ezra's right. After all, Lucy and I lost just about everything we owned when our wagon washed away in that stream. Don't see much point in going on now. You can thank your lucky stars you weren't both drowned with killers on the trail. Killers? Uh, what do you mean? Who else would cut the traces on the wagon team? Oh, I, I see. Well, that's it. That. I reckon we're all agreed that the best thing is to turn the wagons around and head back. We are not agreed, as return. Thunderation, sir. I thought I told you important things like this ain't for women folk to decide. Shut up, you old windbag. Us women are going to have a say in the matter whether you men like it or not. You bet we are. Uh, uh, Lucy, you mean you, you want to go on? Of course I do, Tom. Why, what does losing our belongings matter when we have the whole West and our future in front of us? She's right, Tom. Now listen to me, all of you. When you people started out, you were determined to make new lives in a new country. Don't give up now. The West needs you, and you need the West. Don't pay no attention to them, boys. Ezra, you haven't got the brains of a canary. Anybody with half a mind could see the masked man's talking for our own good. <laughs> but be that as it may, us women ain't budging from this spot until tomorrow, when everybody's had a chance to speak their peace. Oh, Victor, oh, boy. Oh, oh. I waited where you told me to, but when I saw you riding toward camp, I thought I'd better follow. Is everything all right? No, Dan. But perhaps tomorrow it will be. The next day, while Dan remained in camp, Seth and Tom accompanied the Lone Ranger and Tonto as the latter trailed the buffalo to obtain fresh meat for the homesteaders. Some time later, they sighted the herd, grazing quietly in a basin. Tethering their horses and keeping against the wind, they crept through the tall prairie grass and stalked the game. Seth pairing off with Tom, the Lone Ranger with Tonto. Out of. Uh-huh. I've got my sights on that big fellow over to the left. Ah. Uh-huh. Me take one next to him. Ready, Seth? Tom? Just give us the word, stranger. We're ready whenever you are. We'll all fire together. Ah, that confused buffalo. Give us a chance for a second shot. Now. I got mine. Here, we all got one. Looks like we're going to have fresh buffalo meat for supper tonight. Ready again? You bet. Wait. Who's that? Maybe somebody else out hunting. It's Indians. They're on the other side of the herd. There they are. And they're shooting at us. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. As bullets whipped at them through the tall prairie grass, Seth and Tom peered anxiously across the buffalo herd for a sight of their attackers. Then, assuming the masked men and the Indian were of the same mind, they dashed for the horses. The Lone Ranger and Tonto stayed behind. Head for the horses, Seth. We've got a war in the camp. How many Indians do you reckon there are? A whole band, most likely. Uh, bless their hides. I'll wager even the women folk will want to return east when they hear we're alive will be attacked by redskins. Uh, them run plenty fast. We follow them? No, Tonto. Let them go. I want to... Listen. Indians stop shooting. Yes. As soon as they saw Seth and Tom run for their horses. And that's strange. That's not like Indian. No, they were careful to keep their distance, too, even though there were only four of us. Isn't that right? I wonder why Look, they... Look, Indians still not come to attack us. In right way. Come on, Tonto. Uh-huh. Where we go? To the horses. We're going to investigate those Indians. to that clump of trees, Tonto. Maybe Indians may camp there. We'd better continue on foot. We don't want to be seen. Ah, uh, Indians not far away now. Oh, Silver, oh boy. Oh, oh Scott, oh, Tonto. Oh. Oh. Well, hits them out of sight under these trees. Ah, uh, these smell smoke. Indians maybe make campfire. Yeah, the smoke's rising from behind that brush, Tonto. Come on. Ah, uh, that's where trail lead. Isn't a very large band, judging by the tracks they've made. Maybe that's why they're not attack us. Careful. This is as far as we can go without being discovered. There they are. Ah. Uh, they're not many. Maybe fifteen. Yes, I... Look. What is it, Kimosabe? Them not Indian. What? Them white men dressed as Indian. Wear buckskin. Plenty war paint. Are you sure? Ah. Uh. Them wear long hair, Indian, too. You look, them and take off wig. You're right. Why them do that? I don't know, Kimasabe. If it weren't for this clearing, we could move closer and hear what they're saying. Ah, we not find bush closer than this. Someone has been trying to stop or discourage the homesteaders ever since they entered the ravine. My guess is that these men are behind it. Ah, them shoot at Seth and Tom. Maybe think us homesteaders, too. Unless I'm greatly mistaken, they also cut the traces on the wagon team and stampeded the buffalo toward the camp. And then make plenty trouble. I wish I knew why. Come on, we can't run any more here. Uh-huh. Tonto. Uh-huh. Did you notice the situation of their camp? Uh, time to see it. We may be able to make use of it to prevent the wagon train from turning back. The homesteaders say they not want to go on. It's the men principally. They're discouraged. They met an unusual number of hardships. Am I right? We can't let them turn back, Tonto. They're too badly needed in the West. Mm. What we do? Steady, big fella. <coughs> we'll return to camp. I have a hunch we'll find the help we need there. <coughs> Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Meanwhile, the camp of the homesteaders was suddenly aroused by the sight of Seth Holloway and Tom Barkley, racing their mounts through the ravine toward the wagons. Their haste, the sound of their shouts, brought people running to meet them. Indians! We've seen Redskins! Oh, 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 what happened? Where'd you see the critters? Oh, Tom, are they coming to attack the camp? Uh, I'm not sure, Lucy. Seth and I were hunting buffalo with a masked man and his friend when they shot at us from the other side of the herd. Where is that masked fellow? I don't know, Ezra. Tom and me thought him and the engine lit out when we did, but they must have stayed behind. Maybe they've been killed. Not them two. They can take care of themselves. Indians. Why, Sunday, that settles it. Settles what? We're heading back east. We've had more than our share of trouble already. When it comes to having our scalps lifted, it's time we showed sense enough to get out of here. Are all of you fellas of the same mind? I wasn't sure before, Seth, but those Indians represent real danger. And we've got to think of the women for it. Stuff and nonsense. It ain't us women that's afraid of a passel of painted savages. It's you men. That's a confounded lie, sir. We ain't afraid of nobody. We just don't see no sense in running risks when we don't have to. But it's shameful to turn back after we've come so far. There ain't no use talking. Our minds are made up. Seth, you're the boss. When do we break camp? Well, it's too late to start back today. Better for us to get a good night's rest and start early in the morning. Yeah, I suppose them engines take it into their heads to attack tonight. I'm thinking they won't, long as we've got the wagon circled and keep a strong guard posted. They'd more likely wait to ambush us on the trail. And turning back would fool them. Yes, that's right. <laughs> 
Tom, Tom, you want to go on. Talk to the men. Make them see how important it is. I I think they're right, Lucy. Oh, Tom. Now, don't take it so hard, honey. Tomorrow you'll realize it's all for your own good. Oh, sir. And the addle-headed fools, all of them, turning back after we've come all these miles. If there was only something we could do. There is. Mercy. Me, the masked man. We'll talk oh. behind this wagon where no one can see us. But... Hurry. You seem to be the leader of the women, Sarah. Your voice is important, too, Lucy. How anxious are both of you to continue on west? Stranger, when Ezra and me started on this trip, I had my heart and mind set on the kind of home I've always wanted. And when a woman sets her heart and mind on something, even wildcats won't stop her. That's just how I feel, too. I hoped you'd say that. The rest of the women feel the same way. You're doggone right they do. But the men folks won't give them a chance to say nothing. I can help you persuade the men to continue west. You're willing to help. You just tell us how. Very well. <gasps> Quiet, somebody's coming. It's Toto. Kimosabe. Yes. Me bring Dan. Good. Dan, I've got an errand for you. It's important that you carry it out with all possible speed. Gosh, you can count on me. What is it? I want you to ride to Cedar Ridge and bring the sheriff back here. Here. This will make him understand how urgent it is. Yes, sir. I'll go right away. Come on, I'll help you saddle up. Lucy, did you see what he gave the lad? Why, no. It was I... a bullet. A silver bullet. Lucy, he's the man we've heard so much about. He's the Lone Ranger. That night, Seth Holloway posted sentries at strategic points around the wagon train to guard against a surprise attack. He himself kept one watch, sitting cross-legged near a campfire, his rifle cradled in his arm, ready for instant use. With him, keeping company, sat Tom Barkley. Seems like a darn shame, Seth. Coming all the way out here just to turn around and go back. Well, that's the way the men want it. You spoke up for it yourself, Tom. Ain't nothing to do about it now. I wouldn't feel quite so bad about it if it weren't for Lucy. She took it mighty hard. All the women folk took it hard. Funny thing, though. You know, they, they seem to be acting kind of chipper about it later on in the evening. Yeah, I noticed that. Wonder what brought about the change. No, I don't know. Women are a mystery to me. Can't figure them out no ways. Likely they just had a change of mind or something. One minute they're mad, and the next they're busting with smiles. Seems to me they're mighty quiet of a sudden. Mighty scarce, too. I had them quartered in them wagons in the center of the circle. So they'd be safer in case the Indians come. Oh, I guess that's why we have What was that? Hmm? I didn't hear nothing. Sounded like somebody stumbled. Listen. I reckon your imagination's acting up, son. I'd swear I heard something. You better fetch your rifle. It's time for you to take over my watch. It's in the wagon over there. I'll get it. If them engines are planning to massacre us tonight, they'll find Seth Holloway in bed with his boots on. Uh, can't hardly keep my eyes open. Seth! Seth, my rifle! Oh, what's the matter now? My rifle, it's gone, disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. I put it in that wagon just a few minutes ago. Now I can't find it anywhere. Uh, what in thunder is this coming? Seth! Hey, Seth! What's well, Ezra Turner and a lot of the other men? Ezra? He's supposed to be standing guard. Yeah, there's thieves loose in the camp. Rifle thieves. Huh? They've stolen guns right and left. Got mine and the guns belong to these boys, too. They'd hardly have shoot nine left the camp. Jumping uh, Jehoshaphat. If the engines come now, we're gone. <laughs> Straining his tired eyes through the shadows of night, Seth kept his vigil over the wagon train until, to his relief, dawn lightened the sky without a sign of Indians. But his relief was short-lived. Yeah. Oh, now what? Hey, Seth! Seth, we've been visited by Indians. You must have slipped by us in the night. What in Sam Hill are you two talking about? Sarah, I'm talking about Sarah. She's gone. Lucy, too. What? Oh, stand there like a galoot. We've got to go after him. Who? The Indians, you pie-eyed Marshorn. They sneaked in when we wasn't looking and kidnapped them two women. That must have been the noise I told you about last night, Seth. Of course it was. Them redskins stole the women and all them rifles. What in thunder would they do that for? How in thunder do I know? Quit palavering. Let's get the horses. We'll get after them farmers. Hey, look. It's the masked man. Great day. He's got the women with him. Yeah, there's Lucy and Sarah, too. Yeah, who's the rest of them riders? Indians. Indians? Indians. Must be more than a dozen. Yeah, what, They're uh, prisoners. 
The women are holding guns on them. Shara! Shara! Lucy! Lucy, what have you pulled? Oh, 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 oh. uh, keep your eyes on them prisoners, Lucy. Don't worry, sir. I've got them right in my gun sight. Uh, what in tarnation is going on here? What have you petticoats been up to? We've been doing your work, that's what. You tongue-wagging old fool. Yours and the job of every other able-bodied man in this outfit. Oh, goodness, Shut woman. Shut up, I... Ezra. Right now I'm doing the talking, and you're doing the listening. Those Indians are the ones who shot at Seth and me while we were buffalo hunting. They're not Indians, Tom. They're renegade whites. Look. Jumping juniper, there were an Injun <laughs> wings. These are the savages who frightened all you men into deciding to turn back. Fifteen outlaws who surrendered to two puny women. You mean you and Lucy captured them critters just by yourselves? The masked man helped us. It was his idea. But how? Well, it wasn't as dangerous as it seemed. The outlaws were camped in a clearing. In the night, it was easy for us to poke several rifles through the brush surrounding the clearing without being seen. Hinderation. That's what become of all our right guns. Hey, the women stole them. While the women stayed out of sight, Tallo and I fired several shots in the air and called on the outlaws to surrender. And that's just what they did after seeing all them rifles staring at them from the brush. They thought they were surrounded. Well, I'll be hornswoggled. Oh, Victor, hold on. Oh, hold, hold, hold up there. Hold, 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 hold on. Golly, I hope I'm not too late. I brought the sheriff, just like you said. Looks like we got here just in time, son. You know these outlaws, sheriff? I should say I do, but I was never able to get the goods on them. They'll talk now. They're gunmen. Hired by a few greedy cattlemen to stop settlers from homesteading the land. So they're the ornery skunks who cut them wagon tray straps and stampeded the buffalo. And they sure are. And if us women hadn't showed you what you're scared of, you'd have let them lick you into going back. Or are you still aiming to go east? I should say not. Well, we can't turn back now, not after letting a couple of petticoats do our fighting. We'd be a laughing stock wherever we went. We're heading west. Thanks to Lucy and Sarah. And the Lone Ranger. Well, Silver! just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.